Hi, my name is Mariazzi, and welcome to the third Apollo Studio tutorial. In this video, we will go over more devices and all the features they offer to help you in producing light effects. The Fade device takes incoming signals and generates a smooth color gradient comprised of a large number of signals. It's used to create complex color gradients that last for a period of time. The Fade strip contains a preview of the gradient as well as its color points. Clicking a point opens the color picker on the right side, where you can select the color for that point. To add more points, double-click the fade strip at the position you want to add the point to. Right-click an existing point to remove it. Click and drag points to adjust the position of the point in the gradients. You can precisely adjust the point's position by double-clicking the position percentage value. Signals are generated by interpolating the color in between points and outputting them one after another in quick succession. For most computers, this task is simply too demanding for heavier effects and will almost always cause major issues with lag and skipping signals. For this reason, you should adjust the fade smoothness setting in the preferences under processing, which controls how many of those interpolated signals should be generated for every fade device in the project. The drop-down on the right side controls how the gradient will behave. If mono is selected, the gradient plays once left to right regardless of when the incoming signal is released. In this case, receiving the same incoming signal restarts the gradient. If loop is selected, the gradient repeats while the incoming signal is held. The duration and gate dials control how long the gradient should be generated for. The duration is expressed in musical subdivisions but can be switched to a millisecond value by right-clicking its dial. The gate functions as a simple multiplier for the duration. The layer device assigns a layer index to any incoming signals. Its primary use case is to make sure some signals always draw on top of or below other signals. The target dial controls the target layer index that will be assigned to the incoming signals before passing them to the next device. By default, signals without an explicit target layer default to layer index 0. Overlapping signals are mixed automatically as they exit the track onto the launch pad. In the drop-down at the bottom, it's possible to select a blending mode which controls how the overlapping signals mix. In this case, the blending mode on the top signal is used. There are a number of blending modes. When using normal, the signal is solid and every other signal is hidden behind it. The off-color is treated as transparent. When using screen, the colors of the signal and the first signal below it are inverted and multiplied, and then the result is inverted again. The mixed color is generated in a constructive way, and the result is a brighter signal. This mode is symmetric, which means exchanging the positions of the two signals will not change the final result. When using multiply, the color of the signal is multiplied with the color of the first signal below it. The mixed color is generated in a destructive way, and the result is a darker signal. This mode is also symmetric. And finally, when using mask, no matter the actual color of the signal, it is treated as a solid off color and every other signal is hidden behind it. When using blending modes other than normal, the range dial is unlocked. Range controls the required layer range for top signal and bottom signal to mix into one. If the bottom signal is outside the range, the top signal that wants to mix is ignored. Here I've set up a group with two moving lines to help us understand the choke device. The choke device allows you to stop effects running on one chain from a different chain. It contains the encapsulated chain, which is to be stopped from elsewhere. The choke dial assigns its chain to one of 16 choke groups. When a different choke device with the same choke group receives a signal, it will silence the others. The color filter device is used to only allow signals with certain colors to pass through to the next device. I'll be using a paint device to help me demonstrate. Use the hue, saturation, and value dials to define the matching color. Then, use their respective tolerance dials to allow a certain amount of difference when checking for the matching color. Incoming signals with the matching color will be passed through the device, while other signals will be blocked. The page filter device is used to only allow signals to pass through to the next device on certain pages of the project. The most common use case is to assign a group chain to specific pages in the project. Hover over the grid to display the page number and click to select or deselect pages for filtering. When processing with pages colored in orange, the incoming signals will pass through the device. Otherwise, they will be blocked. 
The switch device changes the page of the project to a target page. It's ideally placed before the final light effect of a page. The page style specifies the target page. The page value is changed only when the signal is released, which allows you to have multiple keys as the last input of a page. I've set up a chain which will help me explain the clear device. The clear device resets the project into a neutral state. It's useful along the switch device where it can reset only the multi devices in the project, restoring your multi sampling to a neutral state. The dropdown allows for only clearing the light state on the launch pads, only resetting the multi devices back to a neutral state, or both behaviors at once. To be consistent with the switch device, it also triggers the reset only when a signal is released. The preview device projects signals at a point in the chain to an on screen launch pad. It's useful for debugging your effects because it allows you to see what's happening between your devices. The device has no configurable parameters. It simply displays what signals it's receiving and retransmits them to the next device. However, it's possible to generate arbitrary signals to the next device by clicking on the on-screen launch pad. The output device overrides the target output launch pad for any incoming signals. Its primary use case is to move cross launch pad effects from one input launch pad to a second output launch pad. The target dial specifies the track index the alpha device targets. When receiving a signal, its target launchpad is overridden by the launchpad selected for use with the target track. The signal does not travel to the other track, but rather is sent out to the next device for further processing and remembers its target launchpad. When the signal finally exits the track, instead of outputting to the current track's launchpad, it's redirected to render on the specified target launchpad. The multi device contains a pre processing chain and a chain list. It redirects the data flow to a different chain in the list for every incoming signal after processing it with the pre-processing chain. It is designed to handle what's popularly called multi-sampling. When a signal is received by the multi, it is assigned a target chain index. It is then sent into the pre-processing chain on the left side of the device for pre-processing. When the process signal exits the pre-processing chain, the target index chain is read and the signal now enters its appropriate chain. This chain processes the signal independently of other chains until finally mixing the output of all chains into the output of the multi device. The pre processing chain allows you to have a common pre processing element before branching to different cases without re triggering the multi device if the pre processing chain generates more signals from the one it receives. There are a number of ways to assign the target chain index to an incoming signal. When using forward, each signal will go forward to the chain next to the one the previous signal had entered. When using backward, each signal will go backward to the chain previous to the one the previous signal had entered. When using random, each signal will go into a random chain. There is a possibility that the same chain is selected multiple times in a row for future incoming signals. When using random plus, each signal will go into a random chain. The same chain will never be selected multiple times in a row for future incoming signals. With this, we've gone through every device existing in Apollo Studio and all of the features they offer. Next, I'm going to talk about connecting Apollo Studio with Ableton Live. Apollo Studio is designed to work alongside Ableton Live. Live provides the audio feedback, while Apollo provides the light effects feedback for your cover. Although the two can work completely independently of each other, they can also connect to unlock extra integration features. While all live versions are supported independently, to use these features, you will need to own a copy of Ableton Live with Max for Live support. The Apollo Connector Max for Live device can be found in the M4L folder of your Apollo Studio installation. The purpose of this device is to connect to Apollo Studio. It should be placed at the start of each of your samples tracks in Live. When loaded, the Apollo Connector device connects to Apollo Studio and displays itself as a launchpad called Ableton Connector. In the preferences, you're able to map a target output launchpad for the connector. When using it as the output launchpad of a track, input is received from the Ableton Live chain through the connector into the Apollo track, and output is redirected to the specified output launchpad directly. Note that the connector state does not save, and must be readjusted every time Apollo Studio is launched. The most important feature the connector unlocks is the ability to receive input from Ableton Live's arrangement view. Playing MIDI clips, usually used for tutorials, to the samples track now feeds the input into the Apollo connector, which causes Apollo to display the light effects properly. Another benefit is the ability for Live to receive input from Apollo's launchpad pop-out window. By popping out the launchpad preview window of the Apollo connector, it's possible to click on the on-screen buttons to send input to the samples track in Live. That's going to be all for this video. If you like Apollo Studio and want to support its development, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Bye.